the Antiverse. Our ant room that is just bustling with life, home to a multitude of epic ant kingdoms and neighboring creatures who live out their exciting, multifaceted, and often dangerous lives every day, all within the contained worlds we've crafted for them. But what happens when a colony manages to somehow squeeze beyond the barriers and walls that keep the creatures of the Antiverse captive, allowing them to live unbridled and free in the ether between the kingdoms? AC family, while we've been watching our ants in the carefully designed ant kingdoms we've restricted them to, right under our very noses, a rather sneaky ant colony has secretly set up station in a hidden, unsuspecting corner of the Antiverse. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a story of how I discovered a group of free-roaming ant renegades that I have decided to actually keep free-roaming. No, they're not domestic ants, but I can't wait to show you where they came from and where they've decided to live in our ant room. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC fam. Enjoy. All right, AC family. So first, let me say this. These ant outlaws featured in this week's video remain unidentified to this day. If any of you are ant ID experts or taxonomists, I would love to hear what species of ants these are and more about their biology, as I don't recognize them. I found them to be quite crafty and very resourceful. Guys, keep on watching until the end for the ultimate discovery as to their point of entrance into our ant room and where they've been getting the resources they need. I swear ants never fail to surprise me. A month ago, we welcomed a promising super colony of carpenter ants into the ant room, living happily within this hybrid nest and desert outworld setup. Let's quickly open it up now and see how they've been doing over the past four weeks. Lifting the lid, and whoa, look at them, so healthy, with a ton of brood. Their 10 queens have been quite busy egg laying. It seems the entire colony has chosen to now occupy the driest part of the nest along the top. They clearly are perturbed by our lights and are spilling out into the tube now. Now you may notice these ants are pretty thick. It turns out these ants love their honey, which I offer them in abundance in their outworld. Within this bottle cap, I love that these ladies are doing extremely well and are growing in numbers. And while we're here guys, please take a moment and vote here for this colony's official name based on my top picks from their name suggestions in their last video. Thank you AC Colony for your input. Now as I covered the colony back up, I noticed a small movement at one corner of the hybrid nest. Wait a sec, did I just see an ant? Now while domestic ants come and go in the ant room all the time, this was a species I wasn't familiar with and I knew was not a domestic type of ant. I snooped around for it and found it emerging from another end of the hybrid nest, seemingly scoping out the periphery of the formicarium. Check it out! The ant was actually quite cute, extremely small, perhaps two millimeters in length, a crimson red color with a pale fuzz. I watched as the little gal forged a boat across the glass surface, assumingly for food. But then the questions began to fill my mind. Where did this ant come from? And if they were residing in the antiverse somewhere, where were they nesting? Fueled by curiosity, I was determined to get some answers. Now that I was aware of their presence, I began to spot the mysterious ants more and more. The more I looked, the more it was growingly apparent to me that this entire area of the antiverse was foraging territory for these tiny crimson ants. But then I wondered, where in this area could they possibly be finding the food they need to survive? It seemed to be pretty dead and a dry space to me. But then I noticed, running along the hydration tub of the carpenter ants formicarium, one of the crimson ants, as it snuck into one of the holes accessing the carpenter ants hydration chamber. And then it occurred to me, OMG, the ants were stealing resources from our carpenter ants. They must be small enough to fit in the hydrating micro holes. It was time to open up the hybrid nest and see how these ant outlaws were stealing from our carpenter ant super colony. But AC family, what I saw next 
was something I completely did not expect, and it left me speechless. I opened the hybrid nest up, and lo and behold, ants were everywhere. The ants had amazingly created a tunnel from the hydration tub space and into the hydration cotton of the hybrid nest. There was brood, dead ant body parts, and even mites and springtails. Wow, where did these ant roommates come from? So wait, there was brood. Was there a queen here? I looked around. I peeked into the main cavity in which the ants were huddled, shielding their young from our intimidating gaze from the skies. The ants were clearly afraid, as their home had just been opened up from the roof. Do you guys see a queen? Look at all that healthy brood! There must be a queen in here somewhere. Royal Queen, reveal yourself to the AC family. We demand you step out for us to see. And then, I saw her. She's right there. Wow! Their monarch was nestled way in the back. But then I noticed the ants had begun to panic and were beginning to show signs of abandoning the nest. No, I quickly covered the nest back up. I felt this whole situation was a perfect opportunity to try for the very first time in the history of the Antiverse and my entire ant keeping journey to attempt housing an ant colony free range. Kind of like keeping a beehive and allowing the members of the colony to simply roam about and reside in their designated hive, the hydration chamber of this hybrid nest. It seems the ants took a liking to the moist cotton within the sewers of our carpenter ants nest, and that was totally okay and super duper cool. Wouldn't you say, AC family? But where did these ants come from? And I still didn't know where they were finding the food they needed to survive. I would soon find out. But meanwhile, the main thing on my mind now was the fear that opening their nest up might have spooked them and caused them to want to suddenly move out of their current location. And then, AC family, I saw this. And it made me chuckle a little bit. Ants were leaving the nest to collect some cast off sand debris. The ants picked up a grain of sand and proceeded to carry it into the nest. How cute! They were mobilizing to block and better fortify their living quarters from the giant who just ripped their home open. Me! <laughs> they continued to do this over the next half hour, but this assured me that these little ants weren't going anywhere. Obviously, to honor AC tradition, we needed to welcome our new free-roaming little crimson residents with housewarming gifts, right? So I laid out a few cockroach legs in front of one of the foragers. At first I had thought it wasn't interesting, but to my delight, it was. The ant was infatuated with our smaller piece of cockroach leg, but it wasn't long before the gang was called. Check out how cute they are! Ants that had had a taste began to cover the area with pheromones to flag where the booty was. Now that the ants were standing still, I could also finally get a good look at them. They were actually such beautiful ants. I loved their color and the cute fuzz. These cockroach legs were surely making their day. I laid out a couple more roach legs and the ants found them and even attempted to drag them home. Looks like this ant will need a little help with that big thing. Over the next few hours, I watched as the ants worked on our roach legs, leaving them to return to the nest and revisiting them to continue gathering their hidden meat. Eventually, teams were sent out by the colony to deal with the large pieces of food. It was so cute watching them scuttle about the huge roach legs, trying to figure out how they were going to transport the goods home. The ants continued to work on these roach legs overnight. Boy, were these ants determined to collect everything they could from these fallen pieces of roach meat. I actually appreciated how tireless and determined the ants were at collecting the needed food, necessary to feeding the queen, all the young, and other adult members. It's this pioneering spirit that I love about ants, particularly at this beginning stage of an ant colony. The colony couldn't have been more than 50 or 70 members strong. These ants depended on these food items for survival. But then it made me ask the question again, where were the ants getting their food when we weren't here to give it to them? And where did these ants come from? The next morning, I got the answer. And to my surprise, the answer to both those questions were one and the same. The roach legs were all gone by sunrise. 
I check to see for some ant activity. And lo and behold, AC family, the answer to our questions were revealed. The ants were freely accessing this top breathing hole to our termite terrarium. Aha! AC family, check this out. So because there was not much space in my ant room, I had opted to place the hibernest of our carpenter ants on top of the termite terrarium. Now I went back to some old footage of when the termites first moved in and voila, right there, one of our little crimson ants. So here's what I suspect happened. When I brought in a piece of decaying wood from outside and inadvertently brought in with it a few ants of various types who were also living in the decaying wood pieces, I had thought the ants had eventually died out of starvation because I had never placed any food into the termite nest since termites had all the food they needed to survive in the wood. But I guess these little crimson ants were survivors, eventually finding their way out of this hole and discovering the dark, moist haven within our hybrid nest hydration medium. They decided that the hydration chamber was a suitable place to live, and they continued to live here while collecting their food from down inside the termite terrarium. What food this is, is still beyond me. Dead termite bodies? Termite feces? Decaying matter? I don't know. Which is why, as asked in the beginning of this video, if any of you know the specifics of this species of ant, and what their main diet is known to be, I'm interested in finding out. Whatever the case, I love that we now have these free roaming, and now that I think about it, self-feeding ants. The idea of allowing the ants to roam freely in the ant room does sound crazy, but something tells me these cute crimson campers find their residence in the hybrid nest to be a pretty royal nest location. No predators, all the hydration they need, and lots and lots of space. What do you guys think? All right, guys, you know what's next. What should we call these free-roaming cute crimson ants? Leave your name suggestions in the comments, and I will choose my favorites for us to vote on in a future video. And so, as we've seen time and time again in the Antiverse, ants surprise us by finding unique ways to survive and set up residence. It's actually the very first time I've ever had an outside ant colony move into my nest. But the catch was, it was on their own terms. I guess we aren't rulers of the Antiverse after all, nor captors. We're just spectators, caring for a dimension of ant colonies that play by their own rules. I wish this renegade ant colony the best of luck. But what should we do if this free roam ant colony explodes? I'll have to decide when the time comes. Now speaking of ant colonies exploding, there is a kingdom of vampires that live within a growing castle that I've been waiting to show you. And AC family, you won't believe what this tribe of bloodthirsty vampires looks like today. Alright EC family, did you enjoy this week's episode? I told myself that I wouldn't accept any more ant colonies into the ant room. But then I saw these little ones had already moved in. Do you like them? Also, don't forget to tune in next week for our big Halloween episode when we get an update on how our Dracula ants have been doing. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and bell icon now so you don't miss out on next week's educational spooky episode as well as the continuing stories of all the ants of the ant room. And hit the like button every single time, including now. Speaking of which, if you're new to the channel and want to catch up on all your Ants Canada lore, feel free to binge watch this complete storyline playlist here, which traces the origins of all the ant colonies of the ant room, so you can follow their stories and better appreciate how these ant kingdoms came to be and why we love them so much. AC Inner Colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here if you would just like to watch extended play footage of the cute crimson ants feeding on their roach legs. I wish I could just cuddle with them. They're so adorable. 
And before we proceed to the AC question of the week, I'd like to plug my daily vlogging channel. Daily vlogs which have become a full out bird dad channel, as I am now raising a baby African grey parrot. If you love birds, I'd love for you to meet my new cute little bird. She's quite the character, loves to cuddle, is quite chatty, and is fun to watch grow up and learn things. Hope you can subscribe when you're there. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, why did we have to separate each beetle larva? Congratulations to Video Game Zach, who correctly answered, you need to separate the beetle larva because they might bite each other. Congratulations Video Game Zach, you just won a free ebook handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, why did we have to cover the nest of these free roaming ants ASAP after discovering them? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love Forever.